grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Over the years, I have often thought about doing my own little private survey. I'm just going out and asking random people on the street, who is Jesus? Because I, I'm curious what people would say. I mean, I think I know. Um, Muslims would say that Jesus is the, the second greatest prophet after Muhammad. Mormons would say that Jesus was an angel. Jehovah's Witnesses would say that, that Jesus is, is a lesser God. And Christians would say that Jesus is God. A couple of years ago, a group called Legionnaire did a survey among 3,000 Americans asking them that very question. Who is Jesus? And what they found was interesting. According to the survey, 52% of Americans, a little over a half, say that Jesus isn't God, but rather that he was a, a great teacher. That sounds about right. Just a little over half of, of our country doesn't believe that Jesus is God. What was surprising is that 30% of evangelical Christians also said that they didn't believe that Jesus was God. Let me repeat that. 30% of evangelical Christians don't believe that Jesus is God. Now, first of all, in the end, it, it doesn't really matter what opinion polls say. I mean, people's opinions aren't reality. Whether people believe that Jesus is, our, is God or not doesn't change who he is. Opinion polls don't really matter. I, I mean, what I see was 9%. 9% of Americans believe that the Loch Ness Monster is real. 11% believe that Bigfoot is real. What you think, what you believe, doesn't change the objective reality of who Jesus is. But that being said, this morning we are going to see that what you believe about who Jesus is, is extremely important. In our gospel for this morning, we found Jesus traveling with his disciples in the northernmost part of Palestine, near a city called Caesarea Philippi. Caesarea Philippi was, was located in the, the northern hill country of Israel, and a on a, on a plateau toe in like the cooler area of Israel. It was a real, it was a vacation spot in those days. It was, it had luscious vegetation, it was beautiful scenery. It was kind of like, kind of like the hill country here in Texas. But the countryside up there by Caesarea Philippi was spotted with different shrines and temples to all the different Syrian and Greek gods. In the city of Caesarea Philippi, they had a, a towering temple dedicated to the Roman Emperor Augustus. And as you came into the city of Caesarea Philippi, right before you came in, there was a cave there, which supposedly was the birthplace of the Greek god Pan. I don't know if you remember Pan. Pan was the one with the goat legs and the human torso played the flute. And on the outside of that cave, on the rock wall, on the outside, they had cut into hundreds of little niches. And in those niches, they placed statues of all these different pagan gods. And it was there, in the middle of all these pagan gods and temples, that Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And the disciples told him, some say John the Baptist, back from the dead. Some others say Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. It sounds kind of like the opinion polls from today. Yeah, Jesus, you're a great man, a teacher, a prophet, but nothing more. But that's really not what Jesus wanted to know. He, 
he didn't really care about opinion polls. What he wanted to know was who his disciples thought he was. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? And without hesitation, good old impetuous Peter stood up and spoke on behalf of all the disciples. He said, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Let's just stop there for a moment because this is where a lot of people sometimes get confused. Is Jesus the Son of God or is Jesus God? <laughs> yes, yes. He, the answer is he's both, right? The Bible tells us that, that we have one God but that our God is three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We call that the Trinity. When the Bible calls Jesus the Son of God, it isn't saying that God ha had, a, had a wife, they got married, and later on they had a kid and they named him Jesus. And when the Bible calls Jesus the Son of God, when it talks about God the Father and God the Son, it's not talking about time. It's talking about a relationship. See, God expresses himself in human terms so he can understand who he is. And, and he says the relationship between the Father and the Son is, is just that. It's a relationship like a father and a son. God the Father loved, loves his son Jesus and sent him to, to save us. Jesus, God the Son, loves the Father and obeyed him by coming to be our Savior. You know, when Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the Jordan River and God the Father spoke from heaven and said, This is my Son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. I'm proud of him. A father-son relationship. You see, when Peter was saying, You are the Son of the living God, what he was saying is, You are God himself in human form. And Jesus said, Yep. That's right. But that truth wasn't revealed to you, Peter, by, by human beings. That was revealed to you by God the Father. And actually, actually, that's one of the reasons why those, those opinion polls about Jesus are kind of ridiculous. As I mentioned, 52% of Americans, over half of Americans, believe that Jesus wasn't God but that he was this, this great teacher. The truth is, if Jesus wasn't God, then he was a deranged lunatic. I'm serious. If Jesus wasn't God, he claimed to be God himself. He allowed them to brutally kill him because he believed he was God who came to save all people. If Jesus isn't God, then you can't say he was a great teacher or a great man. If Jesus isn't God, he was off his rocker. If he isn't God, he was a, a con man or a deranged lunatic. But Jesus was God. Jesus is God. And the other part of Peter's confession actually helps us to understand what all this is all about. Because he said, you are the Messiah. The name Messiah is a Hebrew word, which means the anointed one. See, in ancient Israel, they would anoint, they would pour oil on the head of the people that God had chosen to be the chosen ones, to be the the people for different positions like prophet, priest, or king. And in the Old Testament, the most common name for the coming Savior that God had promised was the Messiah. The anointed one, the, the chosen one to save us. Peter's confession says it all. Jesus is God himself and our Savior. God became a man. Jesus is, is the chosen one. God had promised all the way back to, from Adam and Eve 
to live and die as our Savior. Jesus is exactly what we needed him to be. In order to save us, in order to suffer our punishment, in order to die our death, he had to be a man. But in order for his death to pay the price for all people, he had to be God. Only God could take on himself the sins of all people. And Jesus did that. The Son of the living God, God himself, became one of us. And suffered our punishment, took our place, died our death. A good man, a teacher, a prophet, even an angel couldn't do that. Jesus is exactly what we needed him to be the Son of God and our Savior. And that is the foundation of our faith. Jesus used a little word play here in our text. Now, I've been talking about names. I don't know if you remember, uh, a couple of months ago I told you in a sermon that Peter wasn't actually Peter's name. Did you know that? His name was Simon, son of Jonah. But Jesus gave him a nickname in Aramaic, Cephas, which means rock. And Cephas in Greek is Petrus, Peter. Jesus told Peter in our text, your name is Petrus, rock. And on this Petra, this bedrock, I will build my church. Now you got to understand, Jesus isn't saying, you, Peter, are the rock on which I will build the church my church. That would have been a mistake. Just a few verses after our text for today, Peter actually tried to convince Jesus not to go to the cross. And Jesus ended up telling him, get behind me, Satan. Now, Peter isn't the rock on which the church is built. No one person, no one pastor, people aren't the rock. The Petra, the bedrock, the solid foundation on which the church is built was Peter's confession. That Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. That's what this is all about. That's the foundation of the church. That's why we are here today. That's the foundation of our congregation. That's the foundation of our, of our lives. It's the foundation of our families. Without that, we would be lost. Without that, our lives wouldn't have any meaning. Without that, we would end up in the horrors of hell forever. But in the end, whether you or anyone else believes that, that believes that Jesus is God and our Savior, that doesn't change who He is. It doesn't change the reality about Jesus. Jesus is God whether you believe it or anybody else believes it. But it is important. It does matter that you believe it. You know, a number of months after this incident at Caesarea Philippi, just a couple of months after Jesus died, Peter found himself standing before that kangaroo court that had condemned Jesus. And they were telling Peter and all the other disciples, stop telling people about Jesus. And that's when Peter said this. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. It does matter what you believe about Jesus. It does matter what other people believe about Jesus. Because the only way to heaven is through faith in Jesus. The only way to heaven is knowing and trusting that Jesus is God himself and our Savior. Over half of our country doesn't believe that. So what's going to happen to them when they die? 
you know the answer to the question, who is Jesus? Now let's get out there and help everybody else see who Jesus really is. Amen. And now may that peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.